At the start of the book, Hannah meets Greg Canfield, her elementary school crush. They liked to fight with each other as kids, and when he moved away, Hannah was sad because he was the only guy she felt comfortable with. If he had stayed, they probably would have started dating in high school. They'd go to prom together, get married, have kids. And oh my gosh, what is happening? Now I want Hannah to start dating Greg for real. They have such great chemistry together. She's got room in her life for a third boyfriend, right? Argofomp book review. Argofomp book review. This review was commissioned through Patreon. Please don't tell my commissioner that I like the series and I would probably read them for free. Lake Eden is a tourist town. They're putting on a winter carnival to get people to come during the off-season. Yes, they did that in the last book, but in the town's defense, the mayor is super uncreative. Mom is working with antiques right next door to Hannah's store. Now Mom can visit Hannah all the time! Oh gee, that's wonderful. Mom thinks Hannah needs to make a move on Norman, while Andrea thinks Hannah should keep dating both Norman and Mike, because that is clearly not a recipe for disaster. Andrea's friend Janie Burkholz is in town. Janie works as a personal assistant to celebrity chef Connie McIntyre. Connie quickly proves to be a terrible person. She yells at her employees and threatens them. She assumes that the people in town eat garbage food like french fries instead of her gourmet meatloaf. Wow, I like french fries, Connie! And your meatloaf has like five different steps that take a half hour each. Nobody's got time to make meals like that. The same goes for 12-step cookie recipes, I might add. Well, then again, I, I tried doing some of the recipes in the Hannah Swenson books, but when I reached the instruction, cool the dough in the fridge for several hours, I was like, whoa, that's way too involved for me. Gonna try a different recipe. So I I'm probably not the best chef to judge whether a recipe is good or not. Hannah makes blueberry muffins, which is a sure sign somebody will die soon. And Connie's cake is accidentally destroyed in a car crash. She asks to make a replacement cake in Hannah's kitchen. In exchange for a photo, it's not even a signed photo. What a ripoff! When Hannah goes to work the next day, she finds Connie has been murdered. Hannah gets really mad at Mike when he shuts down the bakery as a crime scene, and he orders her off the case. Hannah has to do her baking at a local inn, which is rumored to be haunted by a ghost. Andrea eats a lot of food here, so Hannah assumes she's pregnant. There's obviously no other reason why someone would eat food. Janie becomes the prime suspect when she disappears. Hannah and Andrea vow to find Janie and prove her innocence. They talk with Janie's best friend, an older woman named Alex. It's a little strange that Janie is such good friends with a person she just met less than a week ago. And Alex completely overreacts when she hears Janie might be arrested. Alex says Connie Mac regularly fired Janie and rehired her later. That's just the kind of angry, power-tripping boss she was. It's kind of a surprise she has any employees, and it's no surprise that all of them have motive to kill her. Five people stand out in particular. Ray, who accidentally destroyed the cake and got fired. Connie's husband, Paul. She had a fight with him uh, before her death. Kurt, the book publisher. She also had a fight with him. Her lawyer, Alan Carpenter. In an overheard conversation, he told her that somebody got half, and presumably half doesn't refer to half and half, because Connie got furious and said, I'm gonna fire you if you don't fix it! And then finally, whoever got half of whatever they got half of, she's clearly angry with them. Over the course of several chapters, Hannah clears Ray by discovering his alibi. She clears Kurt, because he was meeting with his secret girlfriend at the time. Kurt says they're going to make at least three more Connie Mac cookbooks by taking recipes directly from her TV show. Call me crazy, but I think readers will be suspicious that a dead person is writing so many books. They half clear Paul. He's got no motive. He's the one who runs Connie's boutique stores, and the stores are doing great. They've even got an exclusivity deal at the local mall. On the night of the murder, Norman was setting up his camera stuff next door in Mom's area, so Mike insists Norman is a suspect. Hannah is mad that Mike is accusing her half-boyfriend, and she gets even madder when he says, A woman can't possibly understand how men feel. 
Hannah can't understand why she's so attracted to Mike when he's so stubborn and stupid and sexist. She's not going to play detective, she is a detective! I'm pretty sure wordplay is not going to save you if you get arrested, Hannah, but I agree. Mike is not looking like your best boyfriend option at the moment. Mom must agree because she tries to start a rumor that Hannah and Norman are engaged. Mom! Hannah is perfectly capable of causing fake romance drama on her own, thank you very much. Hannah finds Janie, who is hiding inside her parents' cabin. Janie explains she and Connie got into a huge fight. Connie started throwing things at her. Janie goes to the police to give her statement. We will later learn that Janie was adopted in secret. Nobody knows who her real parents are. The culprit attacks Norman with a baseball bat that night. Luckily, Norman survives. He thinks they should use him as bait to lure the culprit out of hiding. So Norman is trying to impress Hannah, but Hannah is more angry than impressed. That has 100% happened to me before when I tried to impress my wife with my fancy cooking. I should have used a recipe from this book. Hannah doesn't want Norman to get hurt, so she publicly reveals that Norman didn't take any photos of the culprit. She ties the photo thing to the ghost rumor, so everybody in town knows about it by the end of the day. Norman is touched that Hannah's so worried for his safety, and they kiss passionately. Hannah notes that Mike may be the man of her dreams, but Norman is the man of her awake hours. That's it! I'm on Team Norman! But then Mike apologizes for being a jerk, and he talks about his feelings for Hannah. They kiss passionately. There's just something about Hannah's van that makes men want to kiss her. Hannah delivers cookies to contestants in the ice fishing contest. The mayor's ice fishing hut has carpeting, a love seat, and a TV. Wow! He just caught a huge fish, and he asks Hannah to help him reel it in with a winch. It's extremely convenient the mayor has a winch, because this is not a fish, it is Alan Carpenter's dead body. So, this is the sixth dead body that Hannah has found in the series. Either she has the worst luck ever, or the author is following a strict two dead bodies per book formula. Hannah realizes Alex is Janie's secret mother, that's why they became friends so quickly. Greg has problems. He claims he sold his store and made a ton of money on the stock market. In reality, his wife left him after he lost his business and all his money. Poor Greg. Hannah wants to track Greg down so she can be his new wife? I mean, um, Hannah wants to track Greg down because she doesn't understand why he'd lie about something so personal and embarrassing. Why would he lie about his life being ruined? Um, I think the reason is obvious, but it's a mystery to Hannah. The only suspect who hasn't been cleared yet is the unknown person who got half. The only way to learn who that person is is to go through Alan's files. The hotel people provide a ghostly distraction so Hannah can break into Alan's room and steal his keys. They break into the store at the mall where they discover Paul is Janie's secret father. He gave her half of his estate. They also discover Greg didn't lose his business. He was forced out of the mall by Connie's exclusivity deal. Hannah has a hard time believing Greg is the culprit. Until he shows up with a baseball bat, Greg is clearly out of his mind. He taunts Hannah with sing-songs. Andrea and Hannah get Greg's confession on tape, and they knock him unconscious. Everybody gets food to celebrate. Andrea announces she is pregnant. Mom announces she loved working next door to Hannah so much, she's going to make it a permanent arrangement. Oh, joy. Hannah announces that she's going to write a cookbook. In real life, Hannah's cookbook came out ten years after this book, so Hannah must be a slow writer. The end. Post-book follow-up. This was an excellent book. The most obvious improvement over previous books in the series was the victim, Connie. She was a well-developed character. It was interesting to see the contrast between her public persona and her private life. Not to mention a celebrity chef is a perfect fit for this series. It helps that there were a few chapters with Connie. In the previous books, the victims were more like Alan. They show up once and then they get killed. Connie's not the only interesting character. I really liked Greg before he became a villain. I liked the twin brothers at, at the convenience store, and Lisa's father was great, too. As usual, the character interactions are a highlight. For example, Chapter 17. 
nothing happens plot-wise, but it was a great chapter! It was interesting to see the characters interact with each other. A good deal of the book is like that. Hannah's interesting, she goes around town and talks to people, it's just really fascinating stuff. They have great conversations. The ghost subplot was fun. I'm glad that the love triangle has finally gotten started, you know? And I liked learning who Janie's parents were, that was a good storyline. Overall, I like the whole book. I don't have any complaints, besides for minor ones. Like, I forgot who certain characters were. And there's a conversation where Hannah's unnecessarily condescending towards Andrea. It made me stop for a moment and go, wow, Hannah's a jerk. Other than that, it's a great book. I give Hannah Swenson number three, Blueberry Muffin Murder, a 9.5 out of 10.